Hi, my name is Mindy Peters. I'm the Solutions Manager for SPI Media. And in this video, I am going to show you how to use Zapier to connect Slack to Notion. Now, why would you want to do this? In the example I'm going to use in this video, we're going to talk about idea generation. As the number of people you're working with on a project grows, so grows the potential for great ideas to sort of be living in the head of a team member. How do you get an easy way for them to share those ideas? Slack is the perfect place for sharing ideas. People can just, as they think of it, quickly go in, type in that great idea, hit send, and there it is, everybody on the team can see it. The problem is that Slack is a terrible place for keeping track of ideas and sort of organizing them, building out a plan into the future. That's where another tool comes into play. Maybe you use monday.com, maybe you use Trello. In the example here, we're going to use Notion, but you could use any project management tool that you like, even just Google Sheets, so you put things in a spreadsheet. We are going to use the tool Zapier as the bridge to automatically take those great ideas out of Slack and put them into our project management platform. Let's get started. Here I have my Slack channel. I have set this up and anybody on our team, once I invite them, will be able to just post their ideas. In this case, it's marketing ideas. It's just the idea that if you've got a really great idea for the marketing team, please share it. We're going to use one requirement when people post their ideas, which is I will be asking them to use a hashtag. In this case, it's gonna be hashtag idea in their post. And that is what will let us filter out the original idea from all of the conversation that might ensue after an idea is posted. From there, we will use Zapier to put our ideas into here. So this is a Notion document. And what I have set up in this document is a board view. And the way that you do that in Notion, so you create a new page and you can choose board as one of the options. So here I am in my board and I have also set up a table view. And the way that you set up a table view is you just click on the view here and you can click add a view. I chose table view. And there's a few things that I am collecting for each of these. I want to know, so the name is going to be the basic idea of the card. I want to know who submitted the card, a link back to that original Slack post, and then the rest of this stuff will get filled in later when we review the ideas. So it's really these first three things that are most important as we get started. So I have my Notion document set up. I've got that Slack channel set up. Let's connect them together. And to do that, we are going to use the tool Zapier. This is Zapier, and Zapier is a really powerful automation tool. It is designed to let you connect a huge number of apps and software as a service platforms together. So things that don't natively integrate, Zapier becomes the bridge to connect them. We are going to create a new Zap. So I'll click on this Create Zap button. I'm going to give my Zap a name. So the way that Zapier works is first you choose where your information is starting. And in this case, our information is starting in Slack. Step one, that's the trigger. In search apps, I will type in Slack. And I have previously connected my Slack account into Zapier. If I hadn't, there would be a prompt here to, con to connect my Slack account. And so now I'm going to choose an event. What is the trigger? What makes this automation start? Here are all of my options within the Slack platform. I'm going to go with new message posted to channel. And now Zapier is going to make me choose my Slack account. If you only have one Slack account connected, that'll be the only option. If multiple members of your team, for example, have connected a Slack account, you will see some options here. So I've selected my account, I'll hit continue. 
And here in the trigger is where I am going to customize sort of what is kicking this off. So the channel that I want to use is that marketing ideas channel. Here it is. I just typed, started to type the word marketing into the search. I'll click on that. And then if this was a channel that had bot messages coming in from say another app, an example might be you can set up Google Drive to notify you anytime you've been shared on a document or something. That's where um, you might have a bot message. In this case, no, we are not going to trigger this with bot messages. Hit continue. And now we're going to test. And the first thing I need to do, because nothing has been posted in here, so I'm going to post a test message here in Slack, and I'm going to make sure that I include that hashtag ideas in my test message. Okay, there we go. There is my test message. Now I'm going to return to Zapier and I will hit test trigger. And what this test is going to do, it's going to look in that channel for a post. All right, here we go. It has found a test post. We can see that I have access to a lot of different data here. I can see the name of the person who posted as well as some personal information about that person. If I scroll through the message here, I can see a few other things. I can see the channel that it's in. This is a thing that we will be using this permalink. This is a link back to that post. And raw text is just what that idea is. I'm going to hit continue here because my test was successful. So now I'm going to do one more thing before I hook this post, before I send this data into Notion. This marketing ideas channel is a channel for generating ideas. And we can assume that when ideas are posted, other members of the team may follow up and talk about that idea. They may follow up as a threaded comment, which would be ideal, but also they might just start posting other things in the channel, other posts to respond and to talk about ideas. I don't want all of that chatter to each end up as an individual idea in Notion. That would get really unwieldy and be very messy to take care of. That's why I've included that hashtag ideas as a requirement for posting an idea, we are going to filter out all of the posts that do not include hashtag idea in the post. And that will make sure that we're only passing the ideas onto our project management platform of choice, in this case, Notion, but you could use any other project management platform that you choose. We will only be passing the original ideas through as opposed to all that conversation. To do that, I will click on filter. And here is where I set my filter. I'm going to choose my field. And in this case, it was raw text. Raw text was the, the copy of the actual post. And my condition is going to be contains. I don't want to use exactly matches because that's too restrictive. In that case, the only thing that would qualify is if the post was only hashtag idea. So in this case, I'm going to say text contains hashtag idea. Do that. And now if you wanted to set up, you know what, I'm going to set up an or I'm going to give two options. Because what if somebody accidentally puts in hashtag ideas and makes it plural, I think that that's kind of likely. So I'm going to say if it contains hashtag idea, or if it contains hashtag ideas, just to catch that very likely mistake. So again, I will choose raw text. You can type into search or if you're sort of not sure, I end up doing this a lot, you can just hit show all options and just scroll until you see the data field that you're looking for. And again, contains. And so now we'll hit continue. And Zapier runs a quick test and it tells you if this filter would have succeeded or failed on the test data that it pulled in. And it says, yes, your Zap would have continued, which is great because my sample data fit this scenario. It had hashtag idea in that raw text. Hit close. 
So far, we have brought in data from Slack and we have filtered it for only the data we want. Now we're gonna pass that on to Notion. I'll hit this plus sign here and I am going to choose Notion from the in the app event here. Notion. Click on Notion. And this is where if you instead wanted to use monday.com or Trello or something, you could choose that instead. So I've got Notion and I am going to create a database item. Now I have not connected my Notion account into Zapier, so I will do that right now. I click on the sign into Notion. When you go to authenticate an account in Zapier, the box that pops up will give you all of the instructions you need in order to complete the authentication process for that app. Just follow the instructions in the box. In this case, it tells me I need to go into Notion. I need to go to settings and members and then find integrations, which in this case is at the bottom of the list. Gray text at the very bottom. It says develop your own integrations. Click on that. You'll click on create new integration. And in this case, I would use the name Zapier as my name. That will help me later when I need to share my board with the app. I'll hit submit. And then here where you see that internal integration token, that is the string of text that I need to put in that pop-up box for Zapier. But before I do that, I just need to go to the bottom and determine if I want an internal integration or a public integration. In this case, it's internal. It's probably always going to be internal for this type of scenario. That just means I only want to basically share this with people who should have access to it, people I've determined should have access to it. So I'll take that string and I will drop it in the authentication box for Zapier, making sure to come back here and hit save changes. I've authenticated my Notion account and I'll hit continue. Now when I go to click here, you'll see that I don't have any databases. There's one more step after connecting your Notion account to Zapier that you need to do. Open up your board here and go to share. Click in this box here and it will show you the options of people you've previously shared things with. And one of the options will be that new integration that you just set up. Click on that and that will allow Zapier to access your board. Hit invite and make sure it says can edit. So now when you come back here, if you don't see your board listed there, just reload the page and then come back and check again and it will be there. I'm going to click on that board and now I can start passing that data from Slack into Notion. So let's go through and fill it up. So first click in name and we will be choosing all of our options from this step one. So you click on step one and hit show all options and it shows you all the data that you can pass through. And in my name, I'm going to go with raw text. Now, my copy might, if somebody posts a really long idea, this might get truncated into Notion. That's part of why I will also be providing a link back to the post. The person who will be processing these ideas is going to summarize. We just want to get the basic information into Notion. So it doesn't have to be perfect because a real person is going to be going through and evaluating these and updating. I am going to leave project or product free. I am going to, however, to use submitted by. And in this case, I am going to choose user real name, link to Slack post. I will use that. And that's the permalink. Status, responsible teams, that stuff is all empty. Ooh, content, you know what? Content, I'm also gonna pass raw text, I'll pass raw text into that one. So basically, this is the whole idea. It's gonna be in there twice. In the, in the name, this, this is where the member of our team will summarize whatever it was. That's okay. None of this has to be perfect. You'll set it up you'll experiment, you'll make a lot of changes. It's totally fine. This is just to get you started. Hit continue. And now we're gonna run that test and see if my information shows up in Notion. I'll hit test and continue. And it says the information was sent to Notion. Let's take a look. Ha ha, there it is. 
So we can see it is in, this is the table view. Let's switch over to card view or sorry, board view. Yeah, I think that this is a little bit nicer. And then as we go through these things, um, a team, a member of our team will look at this. They will open it up and they'll probably summarize this title into something shorter. And then we can assign a project. We can assign a responsible team. Um, we can decide, is this going to live in the backlog, which means it's a really great idea, but we're not going to do anything with it for now, but we're going to hang on to it. Or we're going to say, let's put it into progress and we'll move it over there. We'll get to play with it. The, the nice thing here, though, is we've just taken a bunch of ideas that were destined to sort of die in Slack and we've put them into a platform where we can take actual action on them. There's one more step that you don't want to forget. After you've tested your Zap, you need to turn it on. There's two places where you can turn it on. Either in the card where you've run your test, you'll have the option here to turn on Zap or in the upper right hand corner here, you can turn the switch to on. Click it, give it a moment, and it will say on. Now your Zap should run anytime a new message is posted in that channel in Slack and it meets the filter conditions. I hope this walkthrough is useful to you. We're putting out great ideas every week. You might also like our email digest. Just go to smartpassiveincome.com digest to subscribe.